Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jessica Macrinos and I am part of the marketing team here at Synchro. Before we start the webinar, being that there is a lot of interest in our 15-minute Fridays, we will continue to hold these sessions throughout the summer, so please register if you haven't already. Additionally, all webinars will be posted on our YouTube page if you are unable to attend, if you would like to share it with your colleagues or watch it over again. Finally, if there are any topics you would like us to cover, please let us know. Now, I would like to introduce Greg Demchek, Synchro's Director of Product Management, who will be providing instructions on how to use the cutting tool in Synchro Pro. After the webinar, we will open the floor to any questions you may have, so please type those into your chat window. All questions that we will not be able to answer in the 15 minutes will be followed up with via email. Thank you, and I will now pass it over to Greg. Hello, my name is Greg Demchak, and I'm the product manager for Synchro Software. Uh, welcome to today's 15-minute Friday. Today I'm going to talk about how to divide uh, model objects in Revit for use downstream in Synchro. As you're probably aware, a lot of design models that are uh, authored in Revit are not authored in a way that is conducive to construction sequencing. Um, examples would be monolithic slabs, monolithic walls, columns that are not split uh, by the level, uh, and stick-built curtain wall systems versus a unitized approach. Um, this is something that can be managed and solved uh, within Revit, and I'd like to walk you through that, how to divide up these models so that you can get um, better use of them downstream for sequencing. So here's an example of a column. We've seen this. This column is spanning from the ground floor all the way up to the top floor. Um, pretty common to see this type of uh, modeling in a design model. Same thing with walls. Um, you'll find this a lot where they span. Slabs tend not to be split into pores. Um, and curtain walls here, as we can see, are made up of many pieces, mullions and panels, rather than a, a single unitized element. Um, one thing I like to do with these models, too, just, just to help organize the data later in Synchro, is create a, a custom parameter for task level. And it's just an instance parameter that's applied to um, every element in the model. And if you go through the process of assigning objects to task level, like in this example, the mullion, uh, was assigned task level five. Uh, you can then start to get color-coded information to help you understand uh, where things are on the model. So for a stick-built system, this is a great way to sort of identify objects on a level-by-level -level basis. And all that is is an instance parameter uh, for level for curtain panels. Uh, so it's, it's a good way to sort of control level values for curtain panels. Okay, but what about walls, floors, and columns? Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is link that model, which is called link the walls, into a new Revit file. So this is now a linked file instance. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to use the level information in this linked file. So if you use a feature called copy monitor. We're going to select the link and copy them in. So I'm going, to, I'm going to copy the levels from the linked file into my construction model. And the reason for that, we'll get to in a second, that's going to allow me to divide up these walls into pieces based on uh, level intersection. Okay, so I'm going to pop back to the 3D view. And we're going to use this tool called Create Parts. Nice thing about this feature is a part can be made from typical objects in Revit, such as walls, floors, columns, and uh, roofs. So if we come up to the Modify tab and click this Create Parts tool, I'm just going to select everything in the model and hit Enter. And that's going to make a part. It's a parametric part that is related, the size is derived from its parent, its host element. Okay, but what I can do with parts is now divide them by intersecting references here, and I'm just going to just choose the levels that I copy monitored into the file. And it's going to split each wall at the level. So now I've got discrete elements 
I could use for sequencing in Synchro. All right, so one, one wall part now per level. I'm gonna go ahead and select my columns, my column parts, I should say, and divide these. I'm also gonna chop these by level. And if we want, we can give these an offset. So let's say the split for the column is above the slab, which would be typical. I'm just gonna put three feet here. So we make a three foot split above the level for each part, and that's gonna split my columns. Um, <clears throat> slabs too, or something else we can split up. So if we wanna take our parts, our floor parts, and split these into pores, uh, instead of references, I'm going to sketch a couple lines here so I can freeform sketch where I want to split a slab. And I'm going to just sketch a line here and make another line here. So that's going to split the slab into three pieces. And if I use this add tool, I can add my other slab parts to the division. And now all my slabs will be divided by that sketch. Nice thing about that is if you need to edit the sketch, I just go back, edit the sketch, manipulate the line, and every part is going to update in one shot. So it makes editing of your divisions very easy. All right, let's talk about this curtain wall now. This is a little bit more tricky. Uh, one thing you can do with the uh, copy monitor function is copy a wall from the link into our construction model. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that curtain wall over from the link into my construction model. And it made a generic wall. I'm going to switch that generic wall out with a curtain wall. I call it a 10 by 5 module in my construction model. Now this is a wall that I had preloaded into this template here. And it's composed of a five foot by 10 foot grid spacing. And the curtain panel here is a loaded family in which the family is basically uh, a unitized curtain system. So the mullions and the glass and the transom, they're all built into the curtain panel itself. There's no Revit mullions uh, in this model anymore. It's all individual discrete unitized curtain panel now. Right, so again, I'm not using grids to divide the transoms, and I'm not using the typical Revit uh, mullion feature to get this effect. Uh, that's a great way to work with unitized curtain wall systems. All right, so let's now export this. I'm going to go to Dwif. and load this into a new project. All right, here we go. So now we've got our construction model based on the parts uh, from the link. Now, one thing I will mention is I hid the link before exporting. You'll want to do that. So we're just dealing with the parts that were derived from the link and that copied wall, which is that curtain wall, and the updated curtain panel system. So now you can see our columns have been divided and I can just select these and uh, I'll go ahead and create a task from these. Or you could assign those to an existing task. Uh, the point being that um, it's not that difficult to approach dividing your models in Revit using this part functionality and also um, the copy monitor to deal with curtain walls and systems. All right, thanks. Um, that's what I've got today. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.